When we were young, 2024, all album plays, 57 records. This is it. This is the final review for When We Were Young 2024. We are here. We've made it to the final end of the review series. We're crossing the finish line right now. And honestly, it's refreshing. Our final record of this review series for When We Were Young 2024 is Pierce the Veils Collide with the Sky. Lizzie, before we give our opinions on this record, let us know a little more about Pierce the Veil and Collide with the Sky. This was their third album, and it came out on July 17th, 2012, on Fearless Records. Now, this was their first release on Fearless. Their previous two albums were when they were on Equal Vision Records. Correct. The singles from here were King for a Day, Bulls in the Bronx, and Hell Above. The Collide with the Sky U.S. tour, after this was released, had Sleeping with Sirens, Tonight Alive, and Hands Like Houses yeah. opening for them. Oh, if you think I wasn't there. This was the number 12 on the Billboard 200 charts and number one on the Alternative Albums yeah. chart. This was certified gold back in 2016, and there is an iTunes bonus track when you downloaded it from there. I'm low on gas, and you need a jacket. Before we get into our thoughts and our opinions on this record, subscribe. This is it for these reviews. We have way more coming. We are going to keep doing reviews of other records that have come out that are not being played at One Year Young Fest 2024 because the fest is happening. By the time this is out, the fest is currently like going to happen like tomorrow. So subscribe now to make sure you see all of our other reviews, all of our other videos, all the other content we produce here on YouTube. And uh, thank you for keeping up with us all this way and watching the playlist and checking us out. And thank you for subscribing. You subscribed, right? I know you did. Here are my thoughts on Collide with the Sky by Pierce the Veil. So I do like this record. I'm okay. a fan of this record. Now, I got into Pierce the Veil off of their second record, went back to the first. And so the second record, like, I mean, I'll just be straight up. It's way better than this. <laughs> like, it is their better record. It's an incredible album. It has a lot more songs on it that I identified with. I also became such a huge fan of Pierce the Veil from the first and second record that like this record was always going to mean something to me. And this record was always going to be something that I immediately listened to, like was excited for when it came out and was like super into in, in literally 2012. So I'm, I'm a fan of it. I love the songs on this record. I thought that it was excellent for the time. I will say some stuff about it. That is not as positive yeah. in that. I don't think there are as many strong songs on this as some of their previous ones. I do think there are a few skips on it. But Here's the Veil is an insanely talented band, an insanely capable band that wrote some music that no one else was doing, no one else could do. A, because like they had, they're, they're Mexican, so they could write music that none of us white boys could understand. True. <laughs> no white dudes could do. And influenced by so much stuff that like, no one had ever heard before, Pierce the Veil added it to this style of post-hardcore, this style of screamo, this style of metalcore, whatever it is. I still think that like this record being like their third record, their maybe their third best record of their first three, is like they did stuff that no one else was doing and it stands the test of time for a reason. King for a Day is as big as it is. It is maybe to this day one of the largest emo, pop punk genre, warp tour genre, all that stuff, whatever place you put it in, it is maybe one of the largest songs, maybe one of the most popular songs among kids that are like getting into this genre now. King for a Day is up there. Oh yeah. Which is insane. Like it is crazy that that song is as popular as it is. I love it. I always like thought that was one of the best songs on this record. I always thought it was like, this record is very top heavy. This record has like all the hits right off the top. And they're like, here you go. You got them all. But I, 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 I'm so happy for the success that Pierce the Veil has gotten because I was such a fan and I'm happy that this band has stood the test of time. I do prefer the record before this. Okay. <laughs> so I, I do like this record. I know this record very well. I've loved this record for a long time and it's maybe their second or third best album. Here are my thoughts on Pierce the Veil's Collide with the Sky. This was an album that I did end up enjoying Good. enough. It is very <laughs> top heavy for sure. Yeah. And I felt bad kind of saying that because I do think that there's a couple tracks throughout that do stand out, but I do agree. There are a good amount of skippable tracks that mm -hmm. if they were to able to fine tune, a lot of them would probably just stand the test of listenership to get past that top heavy part yeah. and to really capture 
the full entity of this album. I did really enjoy a lot of the instrumentation, the construction of the song, because this does sound different compared to other acts we've listened to during this time that sound similar and was also just in that genre. Now, this was a band I never got into or listened at all until very, very recently because this kind of was in the same Sleeping With Sirens vein for me when I was in high school. It's like, oh, this is just for the fangirls over there. I, mean, yeah. I don't subscribe to that. I'm too cool. I'm like, you know, stupid and 15, okay? Yeah, we all had them. Yeah. We all had it. That, that That's what it was to me. And then I just never listened to it. I had a lot of friends who had listened to it, but it, it never was a band that ended up being a primary talking point for a really long time that they would say, oh, I listened to Pierce the Veil when describing music in the alt scene that they listened to. King for a Day started popping up on TikTok and I said, okay, like this yeah. is a really good song. And then I started listening to more of their singles and I said, oh, these are really good too. I think as well what you brought up that they're able to craft a lot of different sounds that a lot of these other people in the scene don't because they're Mexican. And as somebody who is also Mexican, it is very good to see <laughs> that representation and hear this type of background, a different culture to come through at the same time when now we are starting to slowly see a lot more diversity in this scene, but it's not nearly at the caliber that it really should be. And I think Pierce Seville were some of the first few early ones to do that yep. and do it pretty unapologetically and just straightforward oh, yeah. saying you're going to like it. And guess what? People love this. When they played warp tour one year, they had a big Mexican flag behind them while they played. Love that. And like, no one would really do that. What are your top tracks from Collide with the Sky by Pierce the Veil? I really like the opener track, May These Noise Startle You in Your Sleep. And I know it's only, what, a minute and 30 seconds? I mean, it's like an intro to Hell Above, yeah. I think it it's really, yeah, that's the thing. It bangs. <laughs> but it do bang, though. It flows really well straight into in Hell Above. I was like, whoa, is this the same song? I had to go back and look at it. I just think it introduces it so beautifully and it's mysterious and it catches my ear and it made me go and look and say, is this one full song? I wish this song was longer. There's a lot of really good parts in that. The transition, the intro part of it is really good. That little like riffy breakdown. Again, what they can do is like, it's just very different than what a lot of other bands could do. So even when you do like this little intro into another song, it's still is like, damn, no one could do it like Pierce the Veil. No, yeah. one, no one can make this like Pierce the Veil. My first one I'll go with uh, Tangled in the Great Escape. Okay. Uh, which I immediately knew as soon as you have Jason Allen Butler of uh, Fever 333, formerly of Let Live. This came out right at like when Let Live was popping off. Okay. Like everybody wanted to work with Let Live. Everybody wanted to work with Jason Allen Butler. This came out right at that time. And I think that one of the very interesting things about this album, especially King for a Day and Tangled in the Great Escape, that no one else really does, is that when you have a feature, the feature is not, here's your verse. The feature is, you're in this song. Yeah. Like, King for a Day, Kellen Quinn is part of the entire song. Tangled in the Great Escape, Jason Allen Butler is part of the entire song. Yeah, he's There's, integrated really well. Yeah, and so, like, that moving through it and that way that, like, his vocals and Vic's vocals, like, flow together, I think it's something that, like, no band has really done. And why? It's so good. Have somebody who is a really good singer in their own right be on the song, be a part of the song. And, like, sure, it's not like Pierce the Veil has gone on tour with Sleeping With Sirens every tour, just most of them. But you still play King for a day and you have the audience do the Kellen parts. Yeah. You can write a really good song with another singer who's fully integrated into it and it bangs. And I think this song is like a really like artsy, heavy, yeah. melodic. It's got like a lot of what Jason Allen was doing in Let Live at the time. And it like just really moves in and out of all of these different things. Uh, it is unfortunately way too Isles and Glaciers, <laughs> uh, which is also the project that half of Pierce the Veil and then like Craig Owens and Johnny Craig were involved in at the okay. time. We'll review that record at some point. Teaser. But yeah, it, it does feel like there's a little bit too much of that like overproduced stuff in that. But at the same time, I think the fact that it is dueling vocals and it's not King for a Day is like, I recommend that song if you haven't listened to that again recently. Listen again. It's really <laughs> good. I agree. I think this is the song that actually made me kind of stop and say, like, what's happening here? And not mm -hmm. in a way of me being upset of what I was listening to. I think this is the most intricate of 
the songs that are on here. Yeah. It almost gave me like a Western tinge vibe. Yes, yes. And that's obviously big right now is alt country. So this is one. The sound is a little bit ahead of its time. I don't know if I agree, but go on. Oh. I don't know if I hear it. Really? I feel like. I hear a little bit of a Western, like the guitar lines, but I think it's the same sort of like Spanish, Mexican guitar sounds of everything else that sort of has that, like, I guess, Western vibe. You're kind I of think it's about. because it's more stripped down and you have yeah. Jason, Alana but- Butler being using a lot of different vocal ranges that I thought that this was honestly another alt country singer that I listened to because it sounded very similar to me. Um, I think just because it is just so different compared to the rest of the album and what everything else that I know and have heard from Pierce the Veil this was a big standout track to yep. me. This would be an, a track that I would say, guys, this is probably one of my favorites from Pierce the Veil because it shows that they, they're able to do it. They're dynamic. Yeah. That's like the, the best thing about Pierce the Veil is that they've never been just one thing. They are like very much like Chiodos that moves in and out of a lot of different things while you're listening to the record. You're not just getting one vibe from it. You're not getting one sound from it. You're getting a lot. You're getting a lot of creativity. You're getting a lot of musicianship ideally never getting tired of it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I do think this record has some not so good ones. So I'm low on gas and you need a jacket is a song I've listened to a lot from this album, both the regular version and the like more stripped down version as the mm-hmm. bonus track. And even when I listen to it back in the day, I'm like, this song doesn't make any fucking sense. The lyrics don't make any sense. There's no like cohesive pop song in this. But I've listened to it like a thousand times, right? Yeah, listen, I, I was reading the lyrics. The top of it got me. And I said, okay, interesting. And then we go through and I'm I'm like, where's the story so, going here, my guys? So this is something that I think is, is part of this record. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't fucking care. When they were writing the lyrics to this, they like sequestered themselves in a cabin and they were writing the songs. They had fans send them letters and send them like stories about themselves and talk about themselves And a lot of the lyrics in this are some of those letters and like stories that their fans were telling and like things they'd been through and ways that like the band had helped them get through these moments. And so they're kind of referencing a lot of different pieces from around these stories, which is very cool and very interesting and really disconnects a lot of things because it's like this from over here and this from over here. It's like, I kind of want one thing and I'm low on gas is like, it's the story doesn't make any sense. No, it, it, it is really disjointed. I really like this song. Though. No, it's good. That's <laughs> like, the thing. I don't. I don't. I, I, I haven't gone back here and listened to it. And I said everything that's being played, that's being sung. Vic Fuentes's vocal range, great, but it just kept giving me pause, and I kept replaying. It. I'm like, why does this not sit right with me? And it's because the lyrics are just yeah. All over. But straight up when you get to, uh, heard you ended up in Palm Springs dancing on tables. Yeah. Almost fought some bitch at the club. Got kicked out of your hotel room, lost your shoes. Well, fuck, what am I supposed to? I don't know, man. I think it's a really bad song. I love it so goddamn much. It's I think awesome. it's supposed to be like one of their sincerely goofy songs. A I, bit. That's it. That's it. I don't know. I mean, I always imagine what it would be like dancing on a table, but I know my dumb ass would probably fall off of it. Just another set of bones to lay to rest. It's really good. I, I'm i really glad that you experienced this with me. We were like, I really like this, and it's not good. <laughs> I thought I was having a stroke. Right. <laughs> Bulls in the Bronx. Ripper. Banger. It's good. The fact that they don't go into a breakdown and they go into a Spanish little guitar bit, banger. It really Incredible. Dance. Game changer. Oh, yeah. You don't have to go into the heaviest thing you've ever heard. You have to go into the grooviest thing you've ever heard. The softest, the acoustic, the nylon string of it all. The thing is, is when you, this is what we need more in this scene and everyone needs to get on Culture. board. <laughs> Culture. And to know how to just shake their ass. Just get into it. Just start dancing. Yeah, that's culture. That's not being fucking mayo, mayonnaise. Just getting into it. Just feeling the music. Uh, I, I don't know how else to explain it. Just move your hips. Sorry if you don't have hips. That sounds devastating. Because we're white, dude. We don't have rhythm. We know yell and sing about girlfriends. We know yell, sing about girlfriends. Eat hot chip, <laughs> yell, sing about girlfriends. That's all and we know. Lie. And lie. And colonize. All these white dudes lie. So, Brian, do you have any hot takes? Yeah, I do. (laughs) I bet you fucking do. 
I think the reason that I don't like this record as much is because of John Feldman's re- production. And it's, it's always the case with a John Feldman record. It's like there's too much John Feldman in this. There are so many parts of this where the song is just good, right? And then they'll do like a weird vocal effect or they'll like pull the guitars out. And so like every like few measures, there's like a little trick. There's a little production trick that happens. He did this with the used on Lies for the Liars. He did this with Escape the Fate on This War is Ours. This War is Ours. He does with a lot of these records where it's just so much like production tricks. And Pierce the Veil is a very good band that writes very good songs. You shouldn't need those tricks. And the fact that they're still there, to me, it just speaks of like, you didn't think the song was good enough to stand on its own. So you had to add a little flair to it and a little of this. And those always pull it back. Those always re- like reduce the quality of the song to me. And I, I, I think even in 2012, when I heard this record, I'm like, it's not as good as the one before because the one before let the songs stand. They let the songs be the songs that they are because it's already good. And I think thinking about like that weirdness that we experience with I'm low on gas is that like it's overproduced. It's overdone. It's over like there's too much happening. There's too much of this. I think it's great how much I love that song considering, right? Like, wow, that song really came out the gate, like doing some weird shit. And the more I listen to it, the more I enjoy it, the more that I'm like, this was a risk and it does pay off, but it really is like towing that line. man. Yeah. You know, I will also say after you get past that song and maybe the first punch, you're kind of done with the record. Although to say, hold on till May does fuck. Yeah. Hold on till May is a great song. But you do not need 100 Sleepless Nights or Stained Glass Eyes on this record at all. Yeah, be gone. I, I would even argue first punch. You could I'm, omit I'm it middle, if you wanted I'm to. On it, yeah, it's not anything that's innovative. There's a lot of production on, on it. Here. There's a lot of tricks. The lyrics are not that good. You know what? You know what? Pierce the Veil. <laughs> Here's another like fucking thing that Pierce the Veil does all the time. Pierce the Veil is the kings of naming cities and states as references where you love. You're like, oh shit, that's about me. They'll always mention like something like that. They love geography. It is a really good lyrical trick that identifies like places that you can like identify with. And it's a, it's a really good trick. Everybody should steal it and do it because Pierce the Veil really championed this. But those last three songs are a little too many tricks. There's a little too much of that. Can I come over to my LA place? Like, no, that's too many tricks. The song doesn't stand. It needs more to it in order to make it a good song. And that means it shouldn't be here. Yeah. Hold on till May Fox. Love that chorus. I know I'm in my mean section, but I love that song. Got any spicy takes, Lizzie? I just definitely feel like after we get through a good chunk of five, six songs, it becomes so repetitive to me and that we should have just cut it. Yeah. I mean, so it's pretty much on par with what you said. It's we could cut three songs from this album and we would still, we would be stronger for it as a society. Yeah, I think so. We would be. It's not saying that they're bad or terrible. It's just, they don't really need to be there that they're, they're almost filler. That's why it's later on the record. I feel, I feel like it's filler and it belongs where it is on the record, but you got to have that really big, acoustic not acoustic but like slower softer yeah. ballad thing to take you out if i heard hold on till may right after i'm low on gas i still would be happy yeah i don't need it the, the sequencing of that record of the record would be better without three songs at the end i think they're overproduced i think it's too much john feldman in it god i need to make you listen to isles and glaciers just so i can say this I keep, i've been seeing that band pop up for so many years and i've just never listened because it's to not it. a real band it's just well because i see the album cover and i judge yeah. like, i judge covers if i will listen to it if it's pretty or not i won't listen to it understand, and i think it's ugly understand that that band existed entirely in the concept of what if supergroup yeah featuring three of the best vocalists in post hardcore made a hardcore record with the receiving end of sirens and like all of the best members of the bands that they come from that's it that's goofy it was really good Cause they was like, it was like out of nowhere. And all of a sudden they just all went on stage and played at South by Southwest. And people were like, this happened. And it was filmed like one video is out and they didn't have any music released. Then they released the record. And I was like, uh Oh, <laughs> uh Oh, they were anyway, like, we can literally never do this again. <laughs> anyway, Alice and Glacier's reunion at when you were young, 2024, 
Johnny Craig is invited. <laughs> Those are our thoughts. Those are our opinions. Those are our takes on Pierce the Veil's Collide with the Sky. The last question we have to answer, should you see them Pierce the Veil play Collide with the Sky in full at When We Were Young 2024? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know there's been videos, a lot of videos of like seeing Kellen come out and play King for a Day with yeah. Pierce the Veil. I mean, I saw that. I saw that shit on this tour, on the 2012 tour. It's still very good. They rip, they shred, there's pits, there's moshing. I would really hope that if they play the whole record, which I'm like, Allegedly. I can skip a few there. They have Jason come out and do Tangled in the Great Escape. I hope he can make it. I hope he's out there. If he can't, I'm going to throw out my wish list here. Anthony Green okay, covers for the Jason part in Tangled in the Great Escape. Imagine. You don't care. Yeah. <laughs> That's my wish list. And uh, I hope, I mean... I hope they have somebody come out and sing hold on till May too. But I think that this album is absolutely worth it. I think this record bangs. Even if there are some skips, I still think it's going to be fun to watch it. I will be there. This record did mean a lot to me in the past and I will still watch it now. So, I mean, this is going to be one of the records most people are buying tickets for anyway. <laughs> like this record's massive. This band is massive. King for a day is way bigger than this band is. It's way bigger than this album is. So, it, you know, I don't really have anybody to convince you want to see King for a day. You're going to see this set. You'll probably leave by I'm low on gas. So whatever. Yeah. And that's when you can dip out. It's about I'm low on gas and I need a ghost energy drink. Not sponsored. And I'm willing. I'm open. Ghost. Don't make me disappear. Yeah. I think that this would be great live. I was able to catch a part of their set all the way in the back from the first when we were young year, which I was further up to see more of it, but it sounded great. It seems like a really good time if you're able to get, into a closer visual range. So this would definitely be something to check out. They still have all the energy they did from back in the day too. Their bassist uh, still running around like a crazy person. Well, seeing their some of their set from Lollapalooza, that's when I was yeah. like, I don't get FOMO from not being in places. I feel like I would have had fun. I would have had a good time. Yeah. And I'm really mad nobody gave me an extra Sunday pass. That's where we'll be at Wonder Your Young 2024. And uh, we've been here. For 57 records. Yeah, we have it. We started this stupid journey in January of 2024, and we have finally hit the end. All 57 records being played at the festival, reviewed, talked about, our opinions given, our takes dispensed, our comments on them. Oh, God, We yeah. commented. Thank you. If you have been here from the beginning, if you've been hanging out with us, if you've been watching all the clips, all the videos and all that, thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. This has been a long, long journey of this year. Uh, it was a goal of ours to hit all of the records, not skip any, not miss any. So uh, it, it was very much something that we set out to do. And I feel good having done it. It feels like a real goal achieved, a real mission accomplished. And it would be nowhere if nobody was watching this. Probably still would be, being fair. Yeah. We probably still would do it. Um, but if you've enjoyed these, if you like these, thank you. We are going to be continuing to do more reviews more of these thoughts. So it's, it's worth sticking around. It's worth hanging out. I were to think so. We're going to be uh, potentially covering your other favorite artists and or band and or album. Yeah. Put together eventually with our takes again. So you can still have continuous rage. Thank you so much for everybody to, for tuning into us. It's something that I understand a lot of creators do do, but having literally anybody you want to listen to two of us bozos blab for this long and give our hot takes and opinions. I think that that's really great. And it's very appreciated from all of us here at the email social club. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> so yeah, please subscribe. We got more coming. We have more content that we're going to be talking about more albums and all that stuff. When we were young comes, but once a year and here's hoping they don't do a bunch of uh, albums next year. Yeah. Here's hoping. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff that's not at a festival next year, hopefully. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for letting us know what you think about all these records. But until when we were young, until Pierce the Veil, and until Collide with the Sky, we'll see you then.